A group of old farts are celebrating a fellow veteran's birthday. That is, until a female twink crashes the party. Turns out, she has a bag full of narcotics, and an angry mob want it back. The crazed gang will stop at nothing to get their hands on her, but unbeknownst to them, these geriatric badasses won't go quietly. It's the ultimate geezer teaser in VFW. Hello there, you Lucy and some welcome back to another episode of Spicy Boy Reviews. I am, of course, your host, Andrew Riles. That's right, VFW, a horror film that slipped under the radar for me. It came out in 2019, directed by not Rob Zombie, Joe Bagos. He's directed a handful of little indie horror films here and there, but his most uh, recent one is the Christmas horror, Christmas Bloody Christmas. We open the film on our not-so-intimidating 80s bad guy by the name of Boz here. He seems less 80s villain and more like a strung out junkie who also looks like one of those creepy male feminists. You know, skeezy. He baits a young woman to throw herself off the bridge because she's addicted to the drug of the street called Hype. This drug is sweeping the streets and making this city sort of a post-apocalyptic drug fueled nightmare. Much in the same way like out of Robocop 2 or modern day LA or Shepparton. It's fair to say that she didn't stick the landing, which upsets her young sister, Justin Bieber, which makes her super pissed. So she decides to steal Boz's supply of narcotics here and take off into the night. Somehow Boz realises this has happened without seeing it because he read the script, and he sends everyone, and I do mean everyone, after her. And to get this bag of narcotics back at any cost. Not far away, however, there is a war veterans bar here ran by Stephen Lang, and he's having drinky poos with his mates to celebrate his birthday. He's celebrating with copious amounts of shots with his war buddies here, who seem to be a cast of aging badasses. One of the best 80s action genre movie veteran cast put to screen just behind the Expendables. The group of aging vets here include Die Hard 2 villain and Grim Reaper William Sadler, Blaxploitation legend Fred Williamson, Sensei Kreese Martin Cove, Sully T-Bird and Luther from the Warriors David Patrick Kelly, and Cheers alumni George Went. And a fresh faced ranger here who's just landed from his tour of duty who stopped by for a bit of a drinky poos. Here by the name of Sean, played by Tom Williamson. As far as I'm aware, he's no relation to Fred, but who knows how many kids he's got out there, so it's a possibility. Fred Williamson is always gonna Fred Williamson. So word of warning, any females who are gonna watch this film, you're probably gonna be pregnant afterwards. Justin Bieber crashes their little soiree here, and it's not long before an army of junkies start an onslaught on the bar. It's up to these aging war veterans to bunker down, and the killing begins. It's a straightforward story of bunkering down with weapons that they find around the bar, you know, very much in the same vein as sort of uh, Dawn of the Dead. And the film goes all out with the gore, full of blood, guts, and brains. We see heads explode, heads getting cut in half, and heads getting completely squashed. There's a fair bit of head in this film. <laughs> of course, it all ramps up to a huge standoff between the army of junkies and the war vets here, where we get a bit of a montage of trap building slash weapon creation. And it's all reminiscent of something out of From Dusk Till Dawn. This film is easily inspired by John Carpenter movies. Not only of the structure, but it's very heavily a love letter to Assault on Precinct 13. Not just in look, visually, but also in feel as well. It's very dark to look at, but we do get some sprinkles here of neon lights. You know, the go-to indie lighting to make your little low-budget film seem more edgy, and also to hide any inconsistencies with the gore effects. Also, there's a fair bit of synth and uh, heavy guitar riffs uh, splashed throughout here with the score. Just another tip of the cap to Carpenter. It also has an old school vibe of an 80s video nasty movie, as if made in the 80s by a little unknown studio. Canon, I'm looking at you. But wouldn't you know it? It's made now, and it's also made by a little unknown studio. I feel an uprise are coming. I'm really surprised I actually never heard about this film until recently. I mean, the cast is full of old school aging actors who I grew up love watching. Shock, full of violence, and heaps of masculinity. Oh. Unfortunately, the film was released in late 2019. It wasn't a good time to release anything worldwide. China had that covered. But I saw a trailer of it a few weeks ago and I was like, how did I not know about this film? Look at that cast! Yes, if you've seen the trailer, the, the trailer kind of gives the whole film away, but that's okay. It's a low budget, 
gore fest exploitation film. So it's kind of what you see is what you get. A nitpick of it though I have to say is Boz the big bad guy here is absolute weak source. Not being intimidating or scary at all. That spiky jacket ain't fooling anyone mate. I've seen a few films from uh, Joe Bagos now and I like what he's doing with the indie horror. Although I have noticed it seems like he's casting all of his mates, or I assume they're all of his mates here, as all the extras and the featured characters. They all look and dress exactly the same, just like Joe. You know, they're all bearded dudes with metal t-shirts and leather jackets. Do I feel seen and represented in his films? <laughs> yes, about time! But if you've seen his latest film, Christmas Bloody Christmas, uh, yeah, you'll notice everyone in this small town looks and acts exactly the same. Everything they talk about is metal music, and they're all bearded dudes with metal t-shirts and leather jackets. But at least in this film, VFW, uh, the cast is broken up with the old school 80s actors. This film is chock full of grotesque great gorgalore. It's an absolute bloodbath. The violence in this is very severe and heavy, but it's kind of a mix of Hobo with a Shotgun and Green Room. I'm going to go on a bit of a tangent here and say that Steven Spielberg said that superhero movies of today are kind of like the western slash cowboy movies of his day. Much like those movies when it uh, came to the end of the 60s, they died a horrible death. And we saw the rise of indie gritty films like Easy Rider and Dirty Harry. I feel like that's happening now with the death of the superhero film, fucking finally, and the rise of the horror movie. They're cheap to make, they have a huge fan base, and they usually make a profit. I believe we're seeing the resurgence of horror much in the same way we saw it in the 80s. I mean, look at what we got last year alone, and look at what's coming down the pipeline. Horror is on the rise, and I couldn't be happier. But in saying that, yes, check out this film, it's good fun. It's streaming on Amazon and Shudder, yeah, check it out. Guys, that's my review of a little gem that slipped under the radar for me, the FW. Write down if you've seen it, and what did you think? And if, of course, you made it this far into the episode, please give me a thumbs up because your love and support keeps me going because I just love movies and I assume you do as well. And, of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe icon because we give out episodes weekly and we'll see you back here next week for the next review. And until then, stay spooky, kids. Mm -hmm.